Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Soap Thing Project, or if you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to take the camera out of the shave den for a minute, and we're going to talk about how to stop your badger brush from eating your lather. So if you've ever had a high-density badger brush, such as this one here from Trotter Handcrafts, if you've ever had a high-density badger, and you tried to make a lather in your shave bowl, and the brush basically took your soap and your water and made it disappear. We're gonna talk about how to avoid that, coming up next. Okay, so the reason your high-density badger brush is eating your lather is a simple matter of absorption. After all, we are dealing with natural animal hairs, which just like human hair, is going to soak up water. So by the time you soak this brush in water for a few minutes and then add water to your shaving soap to build a lather, it's not eating your lather per se, it's more or less flooding it with entirely too much water. So here's how you stop this from happening. First and foremost, you need to get all the water out of the brush, at least to the fullest extent that you possibly can. The way I do that is once I take my brush out of my brush cup, I will squeeze all the excess water out. I will then proceed to run my fingers over the top of the bristles to get any excess water that might be remaining out of the top of the knot. The next thing I want you to do, and this is gonna work really well if you have a, a harder, more dense soap, such as this Ariana and Evans Shave Butter, basically anything that's crope density or harder, as you can see, this is quite a hard soap. What I want you to do is scoop a little bit out of the tub of soap and set it right in the center of your shave bowl. Don't spread it around so that it's paper thin. Leave it in the middle in kind of a glob, that way it has just a little bit of height to it. Because if you spread it around into a paper thin smear, it's gonna make it that much harder to make a lather. So how do we add water? Well, I always use this spray bottle. If you've ever watched my videos, then you know I use a spray bottle to make a lather in every video. So what I would do is, generally when I make a lather, I use 10 sprays directly into the bowl over top of the soap. For a high density badger knot, that's honestly way too much. Usually to ensure that I have the best success, I will actually do just three and work my way up really slowly. That's the most important part, I think, in this whole uh, lathering process is to add water slowly. Next thing I'll do, is I will actually take the brush and swirl it around over the top of the soap that's in the center with almost no pressure, like practically zero. The reason you don't want to use pressure, the reason you don't want to just shove your brush into the bowl is because we're trying to avoid the soap and water getting sucked up into it, which is the problem we're addressing to begin with. So if you're making a lather with zero pressure, then the soap in the water is not getting past the tips of the knot and going further into the brush. So just add water really slowly and make sure you're not adding water too often. Add three sprays of water or add just a dab of water, however it is you do it, and lather on that for a while. Like I'm talking 30 seconds. Add a touch more water, 30 seconds. Add a touch more water, 30 seconds. I did a shave video recently where my lathering section of the video took practically forever and it was because I'm just slowly building this lather without having the brush suck it all up. So let me know in the comment section of the video if this worked for you. I know I've had a lot of great success with it. The other option you have to stop your badger brush from just ingesting your lather is to simply avoid buying brushes that have high density knots. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here is the Trotter Handcrafts brush that you just saw earlier, and you can see how densely packed those hairs are. Here we have a Turning by Tans brush. There's the coin right there. Turning by Tans brush. 
And if I hold them side by side, you can see that the Tans brush is noticeably less dense than the Trotter Handcrafts brush. Even if I put them together and squeeze the knot so that it's about the same size, you can tell it is definitely much less dense. The reason you'd want a brush that is less dense is a simple matter of absorption, like I said before, or in this case, lack thereof. Because you have fewer hairs to soak up the water and the soap, obviously it's not going to soak up as much water and soap. The other option is to buy much smaller than normal Badger brushes. 26 and 28 and 30 millimeters have only been really popular for the last about 15, 10, 15 years. Before that, 26 millimeters and up would have been considered outrageously huge. Historically, brushes were 18, 20, 22 millimeters. So here we have the Turning by Tams brush, which is a 26 millimeter. The Trotters was also 26. Here we have a 22 millimeter from Viking Shaving Soaps. And as you can see, again, it's a little more dense than this one, but there's much less hair to soak up water and soap. So that's another option is you might consider either buying a thinner, less dense badger knot or a smaller brush such as this 22. Well, I hope some of you found this useful. I know fewer things are more frustrating than losing your lather inside of your badger brush. Questions or comments, put them in the comments section of the video. Otherwise, do yourself a favor and shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.